Hello everyone, this is lecture 29, optical instruments. Mainly we will learn about how optical instruments are working with the lenses and mirrors we used. We'll start with the camera, we'll learn about pinhole camera and modern day cameras and human eye which pretty much works like a camera. And then we'll learn about um, magnifying glasses, microscopes and telescopes. Two types of optical instruments uh, are there. One is working with only with one optical device, such as a camera, has a lens here, and that's the, that's the lens it uses to magnify and um, build images. In the back of the camera, we have um, um, image sensors that senses the image built by the lens. Uh, magnifying glass is the other one and the um, eye pretty much works like like a camera we have a lens here and we have a screen which is our retina there the image is built microscopes telescopes and human eye with the glasses are uh, devices uh, instruments that uses more than one uh, lens or mirrors. The camera started with the pinhole camera where we have a dark box with only one hole open here and the light would go into this box make image on the screen from this tree over here for example if we send one light goes from this way one from the bottom and very few light goes in and builds a faint image but image is upside down similar to one lens camera. Uh, if you have a solar eclipse, you can build your build your um, pinhole camera by opening a hole in a paper like in here, and then sticking aluminum foil on it. And poking a hole in the aluminum foil, uh, you can see the images of the sun on a piece of paper you put on the ground and holding the um, your built pinhole camera on the top. Um, seeing one circular image of sun is not that interesting, but what is interesting is if you wait enough, you will be able to see how the solar eclipse goes. Modern day cameras has larger opening and a lens in that opening and they build images with that lens on the back of the camera where they have uh, electronic light detector which detects the lights and builds an image. To focus the image in a camera all we have to do is put the screen or electronic light detector right over here where the image will fun, fall and we will have a crisp clear focused image. So my tree actually will build here as a real image upside down smaller than the real tree. Uh, if I put my screen here not a good idea or there too close or too far it will give me a blurred image. <coughs> to process the image what we use is is CCD um, devices, charge coupled devices. What they do is they collect light uh, and um, as it charges proportional to the intensity of the light and the color and then they send it to micro um, processors to um, build the image and give us a nicely built image. We're going to solve this question uh, logically. Uh, it's a conceptual question on your camera is focused on a distant mountain. And then you want to focus on a flower that is closer. How do you move uh, your lens to be able to maintain that or obtain that? The answer is given here to move the mirror So to move the lens farther from the film and I want to 
figure that out by ray tracing. So we are gonna draw a convergent lens, which is what cameras have. And we're gonna look at a far away mountain. Let me draw that here. Um, I'm gonna assign, assign a focal point that just logically how much it could be compared to a faraway mountain um, I'm gonna remake this uh, remake this lens which looks bad here we go and we have our mountain here I'm also gonna seem smaller focal point will be significantly smaller than how far away the mountain is and now we're gonna send our rays two rays are are good enough let me mark the focal points remember we had a near focal point and a far focal point where we send the rays and refract the rays uh, respectively I'm gonna send my rays with a yellow color parallel refracts in a way that it passes through the focal point. Let me pull that a little bit down. There we go. And the the one that passes through the ref, uh, focal point refracts parallel. Oops, I went too far. Focal point refracts parallel. Not bad. Um, I converged this a little bit, but it's okay. Let me delete. Okay. It's converging a little bit. It should be parallel. Alright, let's retry that. I'm gonna refract this line parallel to. I don't know, it doesn't let me do that properly, but I'll leave it at that. So, about there, I don't have to make it perfect. The tip of my mountain is somewhere here, and here is my mountain formed. Uh, so, what I wanna do is I wanna put my screen right where my mountain forms so it can focus it nicely right so my screen should be here too here we go now i want to look at a close by flower let's exaggerate the closeness so we'll see the difference more obviously we have a flower we are looking at now and what should i do to focus it uh, for the camera, I can't move the screen or like light detecting uh, surface. So, screen cannot move. What I have to move is the lens to right or left or closer to the screen or far away from the screen. We're gonna resend our rays. Let me use black rays. Here I'm going to send rays from the center of the flower. And, oops, from there. Center of the flower. Parallel rays refracts in a way that passes from the focal point. I'll pull this color a little bit down. There we go. And the one that goes from the focal point, this guy here, refracts parallel. I'm in trouble refracting parallel. This isn't so bad. So the, the center of my um, flower is here. And I'm going to complete it 
flower is apparently larger than the object image of the flower is upside down on the other side now I can't move my screen so what I want to do is to find a way to carry that light on the screen and the way is to move this guy to the left if I move the lens to the left or if it's focal point we also move to the left and we will have the opportunity to focus this image image of the flower on the screen. I could also use these general cheating pages to remember that if I start from a far away my object is small, if I'm in infinity my object is very small at the focal point, if I come closer my object goes farther away and increases in, in, le in length or, or height. Um, so I'm coming closer, my image goes farther away. I want my image to be still at the screen that was closer, right? What I can do if I can't move the screen is to move the lens away from my screen, which is giving me the same idea, of course, same answer. This question is about um, using the lens, thin lens equation to solve questions about cameras. A digital camera whose lens has a focal length of 8 mm is used to take a picture of an object at 30 centimeters away. I'm going to draw a figure here. Actually, it's not necessary for this one for understanding. I can check uh, other images I have for the lenses and so on. But drawing always helps me clarify things physically, what is happening. Then I move on to solution. I um, I want to draw the ugly picture. Remember, always draw an ugly picture. I could go get away with this one without drawing, but still drawing will help me understand things better. So I have a camera. How camera works? It has one lens, right? That lens has focal points, and they are very small, eight millimeter. Uh, comparing to how far away an object I am trying to focus with my camera. I'm going to put a tree here maybe. Uh, I'm not going to try to keep focus this um, object that is quite far away. It's 30 centimeters away let's compare to the focal length so this is s distance of the object and 30 centimeters I can choose any um, unit to keep here I'm gonna keep centimeters convert this millimeters sorry not meters millimeters to centimeters 0 0.8 centimeters uh, that's because one centimeters is equal to 10 millimeters all right let's keep reading now if the object is 2.4 centimeters high so I know the height of my object H and that H is equal to 2.4 centimeters how large will the image appear on the detector once the camera is focused on the object, all right, how far will have the image? I can quickly send rays and, and see that I will have an upside down image that is smaller than my object because I have um, object that is farther away from the lens quite farther away, much farther away than the focal point of the lens. So I'm going to have a very small image upside down over here somewhere. Now the question is asking me what is the height of the object uh, image that's we call H prime. What is that? I don't know how to find it, so I go check my notes. I will see an equation related to that. I will see that the image's distance over object's distance, S prime over S, is equal to 
image's height over object's height. So they are directly proportional. Now from here I just can solve for h prime that I'm looking for, right? Multiply each side by h. I'm gonna have h prime is equal to s prime times h over s. But I don't know s prime, right? I can solve for this. So first I have to find my s prime and here's what I can use to find it. Thin lens equation. 1 over f is equal to 1 over s plus 1 over s prime. And take this guy to the other side, goes as minus, leave 1 over s prime alone, you'll have 1 over f minus 1 over s. Uh, what were those values? Uh, 1 over 0 0.8 centimeters minus 1 over 100 centimeters. Finding that inverse in it will give me S prime. So F prime will be 1 over 0 0.8 minus 1 over 100 centimeters. Uh, when we carry out this solution, we'll find S prime to be... Wait, where did the 100 come from? 30 centimeters. Oh, sorry, folks. I don't know where that, that, that come from. S is 30 centimeters. Okay, let's correct that. All right, 30. 30, result will be in centimeters, and it's 0 0.82219, actually. Let's keep it exact until we find the final result. Now I'm going to insert this in here and find H prime, and it will give me an H prime value of 0 0.066 centimeters, about 0 0.07. All right, that's it. We use a uh, thin lens equation to find S prime, and then use the relation between S prime and H prime H to find H prime, so the height of the image. Remember, we could also easily find the magnification minus S prime over S, H prime over H. Um, or we could also find its absolute value. Human eye look pretty much similar to the camera. It has a lens. We have a lens and cornea um, combination, but we assume it's one lens. We, we are approximated to one lens because they work together. And a screen to refract the image on or retina so retina that refracts on which the image is refracted there's a lot going on here retina works like a CCD camera reads the colors and so on and, and sends it to uh, brain by optic nerves there are rods where it works at um, more um, less light, less than um, intense light, and there are cones that helps us read and understand and, and observe colors, colors of the light. Our um, eyes are amazing by viewing images close and far and changing the uh, focal point of the lens and that's done by using what we call ciliary muscle on the edges of the um, lens the eye lens we have these muscles when we look at a faraway object those muscles relaxes 
and our lens becomes thinner so focal point increases focal length increases And if we are looking at a close by object, our lens bulges out, our um, muscles contracts, and we have a uh, decrease in focal length. That makes sure that we are seeing a crisp, crisp clear image. Decrease. Now that's if we have a healthy eye, if we don't have a healthy eye, then we see blurry image either for near or far. Maybe we might be near or far sighted. We'll get to that in a bit. Power of a refractive, uh, refracting um, lens can be easily found by using one over F. Remember, the unit is a uh, meter, centimeter, or, or millimeter. If I take focal point as meter, the unit of power will be meters to minus one, and that is called in medicine diopter D. If you are using glasses, you might have heard this name there. This part here talks about power of the eye as we look at far away images, uh, objects. Um, if we are looking at far away objects in the thin lens equation, 1 over f is equal to 1 over s plus 1 over s prime, we can cancel this equation approximates to 0 and we are left with this idea here. Um, notice 1 over f is equal to power, so we can simply find power using that 60 meters to minus 1 or 60 diopter. This partially provided by the cornea and partially by the lens. This activity here is very interesting. What you do is to build a, take a card, it could be, I don't know, any card that you are not using. Paper card, of course, I used a uh, business card that I wasn't using. And poke a hole in it, very small hole with a pin, with a pin. and look through that hole to an, a light source light bulb don't look at the sun it's dangerous and any light source other than sun so light source has light and it some of that light will come out of that hole right that's um so that makes this hole behave like a source and it generates a um shadow of the object, I should just do the pin, this figure is showing um, candle, I didn't try candle, but pin works pretty well, small pin with the colorful head, uh, but try candle too. Um, this object is, is a source, and the light coming out of the hole builds a shadow at the back of your um, not here, not here, sorry at the back of your cornea retina um, so it brings, it brings a shadow and shadow is right side up then our brain always thinks what we're seeing is upside down inverse is our brain inverses and shows us an inverse picture of the pin or the Candle. This is angular sizes. We'll use this later. Um, then we look at an object and draw uh, rays to the ends of the object, top and bottom. The angle that spans is called the angular size. Angular size objects of the objects depends on how close they are to us. There could be two objects in real life, very different but they might be looking at the same angular size uh, which is what exactly happens when the moon which is 400 times smaller than the sun can block the sunlight totally and we can have a total solar eclipse how does that happen is that the small object is closer to the lens than the far object 
Uh, actually, the moon is 400 times smaller. About, about. And 400 times also closer, that's why it can block the whole sunlight. If our eyes are not working properly, what we will have is either hyperopia or myopia. Hyperopia is farsightedness. Our eyes are good at adjusting for far and relaxing and showing us clear image for far objects. But if we look at objects close by, our near point is lower than what is um, considered to be a healthy point, 25 centimeters. It's because normally the closer objects, our lens can contract and show us a clear image. But if we have some problems, our lens is not... It, um, uh, our muscles doesn't work well enough to bulge this uh, lens good enough, so it will have smaller focal point and help focus the light on our retina. So light ends up focusing at the back of our retina and we see a blurry image. To fix that, we input a convergent lens in front of our eyes. And here is the system we have there, and two devices. Notice here that I have an object here and another lens in front of my eyes. My eyes lens will see the, ob the image of this guy. This lens is the first lens. So if I have an object here, this guy will generate an image that will be somewhere here, upside down and so on. Let's call this H and H prime to realize that. And then the second mirror uh, lens, you'll be seeing this guy as objects. So if you call this focal point one, focal point two, uh, this guy is S prime or H prime, the image for the first, and S for the second. So we would call it S2 maybe. Myopia is opposite to what hypermopia has. It has a close by object it can see well, but the far away objects it can't focus them on the retina. It focuses them closer than the retina. So what you want to do is to be careful there. Um, how do we fix it? We put a divergent line. How would the optical system look is this figure over here, we have our lens, that's our glasses. And we have our eye lens, that's our eyes. And if there's an object here again, first it will create an image because, uh, I don't know, object. It will create an image through this guy and that image will be what this guy is seeing. I can also send rays to decide on what's happening. I will go this way. There are some other types of illnesses as well. Um, people who wear glasses can take um, can be cured by LASIK. Um, astigmatism is one uh, problem with uh, generally because the shape of cornea is not uniform. We have different focal points for an object, and it's not clear. It's also curable with lenses, or contact lenses. One interesting thing we have here is that Elon Musk says he is curing blindness with brain computer chips. I've heard about it and I wanted to check it. And what they do here is blind people either have um, serious damage in their optical nerve or in somewhere in the retina. So this chip skips, bypasses those damaged parts. Um, detects the images the eye is looking at and then sends the uh, form and images signals to the brain and helps patients see. 
The last one is presbyopia. It's um, it's um, problem with seeing clearly, which is called accommodation actually for that dimension. Um, as people age, almost all of us will have that. Magnifying with the human eye. Convergent lens, convergent lens, two lens system. I see the image by the magnifying glass. So there will be rays coming to magnifying glass, refracting, passing through the eyes. That's how I see the images. Microscopes and telescopes are two last um, instruments with more than one devices. Microscopes has an eyepiece here. Uh, an objective lens there. We put the samples on this platform and we, we move the platform up and down to focus the sample. Uh, objective generally has a small uh, focal length as shown in this figure here. Uh, we put the image about L distance away. This L is standard. You can check the value uh, for, for all um, Microscope is actually over here, 160 millimeter. And we have an eyepiece that has a larger focal length. This FE is the focal length of the eyepiece, and object FO is the, the focal length of the objective. So what happens again, objective forms a real image, and that image becomes very closely within the focal point or around there of the second eyepiece, and it forms an image very far away and very much large. Ideally it's at infinity, but it's actually very far away. Um, because this object, this image, will be just inside the focal point. We have two types of telescopes. One is called the refractin with two lenses, and one is called the reflectin with one concave convergent mirror, one flat mirror, plane mirror, and one lens. All, with all these, what we want to do is to focus a very, very far away, very faint object onto a plane. And again, two lenses work together. Rays are sent in here and pass from the image, and then they send to this guy. And this guy will form the final image. It also closes the focal point, so we will have an image at infinity and very large approximately but is actually at a point that is very very far away and it's large this question deals with having two lenses um as i as i have said we can solve these problems using ray tracing or um Thin lens equation. I'm going to use both to solve this. So the figure below shows a combination of identical lenses. Find approximate position, height, and properties of the final image. And we'll try this with um, rays. If I send a parallel rays to first one, by the way, um, they are identical lenses. So they have the same focal point and so on. If I call this focal point F1, focal point F2, 15 centimeter in between. F1 is about four, uh, 9 centimeters, right? F2 is about right over here. And the total is from here to here. Should be about 15 centimeters. Um, this is 9 from the left, 9 centimeters, and this is, uh, what is 15 plus 9, 6 centimeters. All right, uh, now we can refract the ray we have here. It will be passing through the focal point of the lens on the left 
which is why we need that focal point. Now notice here, it will pass through that focal point one, and then hit the second lens. That lens will, will converge it again. It won't be converging at the focal point, maybe a little bit far away. So I'll do that, not closer for sure. Uh, if I send one, another ray passing from the focal point, should be somewhere around here. That will be the near focal point. Remember the, the side where the rays are coming from are called uh, near focal point, the other side far focal point. That would be near focal point for lens 1 or the lens on the left in the screen. Send in another one. Come through the focal point. Goes parallel. And passes through the focal point again. So let's show that far focal point as well. It should be somewhere here. Now, as we can see clearly, these two rays are not converging anyway, anywhere. And we draw lines to find where they converge. I'm guessing I have exaggerated this really try it went to the other side. It won't go that much. Although it is possible in this case it should be somewhere here. So the image is there somewhere upside down. An image is um virtual. So, images, let me put those here. The image is virtual. Why? Because the extensions are meeting the final image um, upside down. I can't really say it's smaller or farther than the initial object because this is object. I'm going to call this source 1. And then we have an image here where these guys intersect. That would be the source 2, not the object itself, but the image. And this image is very close to the second lens. So it's in between its focal point and the lens, it will form a virtual image. So that's all how much I can say, virtual upside down, in between the lenses I can also say that. That's how much I can learn from my ray tracing. Now I'm going to find exact position. And to find the exact position, what I want to do is find the image by the first one. That image will be object for the second one. So I'm going to draw that image using black. It will be somewhere here, upside down, right? where our um, rays would intersect initial two rays from the first. That will be the image one. Now that image one is the source for the second mirror, so we'll call it source two. Um, once I find that image one, distance of it to the first lens is uh, S1 prime. This distance I'll call S1. And the distance of it, of this image one to the second um, lens is S2. It is the source for the second lens. 
and then we'll find the image to be somewhere here and I will be as to image uh, sorry as to prime let me build as to prime so what do we do first find s1 prime using that find what s2 is because we know this is f1 plus f2 f2 we know the distance between is 15 right and then find the second image distance using thin lens equation so first image for the first image i'm writing down 1 over f1 is equal to 1 over s1 plus 1 over s1 prime those are all for the first lens let me call this first lens and i'm looking for s1 prime i'm gonna find it using the same approach we did before leave it alone take s1 to outside 1 over f1 minus 1 over s1 equals to s1 prime inverse that 1 over f1 minus 1 over s1 to power minus 1 is my first image's distance from the first lens on the left. And if I put in all the numbers I know from the figure, right, f1 is equal to f2 and they are both q. And the distance s1 is let's see 36 centimeters let's put those in f1 is 9 centimeters minus 1 over 2 uh, 1 over 36 centimeters and I'm gonna inverse that that will be my answer and the answer should be 12 centimeters that's s1 prime that's the image for the first and is also the object for the second so s1 prime 12 centimeters total distance is 15 so s2 distance of that image which is source for the second one s2 is equal to 15 minus 12 3 centimeters and for the second image we apply the thin lens equation again 1 over f2 is equal to 1 over s2 plus 1 over s2 prime go through the same process we will find s2 prime to be equal to minus 4.5 centimeters it's minus because we have a virtual image all right i'll let you go with that and later on we'll solve some more problems see you in the next video